Brightstorm has thousands of high-quality videos covering all major subjects. Please check out more at www.brightstorm.com. All right, so we're going to talk about how to name ionic compounds. Ionic compounds, we know, are when a metal and a nonmetal come together to form a neutral compound. Metals being your cations, nonmetals being your anions, or positively charged, negatively charged particles. Um, so how do we name these guys? So we have our metals. And our metals are just going to give us our name. Our na we're just going to name the metals the same name as they have in the periodic table. The um, nonmetals, we're, we're going to change their last name. We're going to drop their last syllable and just add IDE to show that they've been changed to an anion. All right, so what am I talking about? So let's take table salt, for example. This Na we know is sodium. We're going to keep it as sodium. Um, this guy, Cl, we know is chlorine. We're going to drop that and make it chloride. So together, the whole thing is going to be sodium chloride. Pretty easy. Um, we have Ag2S, we're going to do the same thing here, we're going to call this guy silver, same thing you see on the periodic table. And then we have sulfur, and you'd think it would be sulfuride, it's not sulfuride, that's a common mistake I see amongst a lot of students, it's sulfide. Sulfide. Another common mistake is with phosphorus, a lot of students have say phosphoride, it's just phosphide, and I'll write that out for you too. Phosphide. Those are the ones that you, um, that you typically get tripped up, tripped up on. But Otherwise, it's the same thing. Just drop the last name and add IDE. But what if you're given the name? How do you figure out the formula for that? So we have magnesium. We know magnesium is a positive 2 charge. And we have chloride, and chloride's in group 7, making a negative 1 charge. So when they come together, we're going to do a little cr cross the charges to make it our, super, our subscripts. And we're going to say magnesium, or sorry, MgCl2. And this gives us our neutral compound of MgCl2 magnesium chloride. But what happens when we come across transition metals? Transition metals are the guys in the middle of the periodic table. The reason they're called transition metals because, is because their oxidation number or their charges are constantly changing. Um, we don't know what, we, they don't have a definite charge within, their, within, uh, within them. So how are we going to distinguish which charge we're going to use? Well, we're going to use Roman numerals to describe which, uh, what the charge is of that particular metal. Um, you're going to only use the Roman numerals when you're, when you're writing out the actual name, when you're actually writing out the name. You're never, ever, ever going to use the Roman numeral when you're actually writing out the formula. So let's do a practice one. So we have Fe2O3. Well, we have to figure out the charge of Fe. Charge is not defined for us. So we have to say, okay, well, we know, using our cross idea, we know this is a minus 2. So this guy must be a plus 3. Okay, great. So we have to indicate that in our name. So iron... 3 oxide. Oxide's the same as it was before. So now it's iron 3 oxide. This 3 indicates that this iron is a plus 3 charge. Okay, so let's go backwards. Let's go from the, let's go from the name to the, to the actual formula. So we have iron 2. That's telling me this iron is not the plus 3 as we thought earlier. This iron is a plus 2 charge. Oxygen, as we know, is always going to be minus 2, so that's easy enough. So we just cross the, the uh, numbers to give us our formula. And we get Fe2O2. Does this work? This is not okay. Um, as we know, we want to make sure this is the most reduced form as possible. So we're going to reduce that to FeO. Fair enough? Okay. Um, there are exceptions to this in the transition metals. There are some transition metals that actually do have a definite charge. And those are zinc and silver. Zinc is going to always be a plus 2 charge. Silver is going to always be a plus 1 charge. And there is a small trick you can remember to figure out to remember those guys. Otherwise, you have to memorize them. If you look at your periodic table, we know aluminum is in group, in group um, what is it, 5? So, I'm uh, sorry, group 3. So it's going to be a plus 3 charge. We know that already. That's defined for us. But if you go down diagonally, this is going to be plus 2. This is going to be plus 1. Just an easy way to remember that zinc is plus 2 and silver is plus 1. So we don't have to use Roman numerals when describing those guys because they're def defined for us. Lastly, when making sure we um, name ionic compounds properly, is we have to talk about uh, polyatomic ions. Polyatomic ions are exactly as I sound, sound, poly meaning multiple atoms. So these guys have multiple atoms to put together. So when you, see, when you come across a compound that has more than one, uh, sorry, more than two um, elements in it, this guy has three main ones, lithium, sulfur, and oxygen, we know that we're dealing with a polyatomic ion. Um, in this case, you should, your teacher should have given you a list of maybe like 10, maybe more polyatomic ions. Those guys you have to actually memorize. Unfortunately, there isn't like a way we can 
keep those. Those, those are pretty important to memorize, and the charges too. So make sure you, um, an easy way to trick I tell my students sometimes is if you laminate it and put it in the shower, and when you're showering uh, and you have them in front of you, that's a great way and an easy way to like just start memorizing those guys. So that's just a trick I tell my kids. So anyway, if we're dealing with this, we know this is lithium, as always. And what is this guy? SO4. SO4 is sulf uh, sulfate. So together, this is lithium sulfate. Pretty easy. But what if we're going backwards? Um, calcium, we know, is a plus two charge. Hydroxide, we know, is a minus one charge, if you look at the list your teacher gave you. So, okay, so we need one calcium and two hydroxides. Okay. Would this work? No, this isn't working because this two is telling me I only have two hydrogens, not two hydroxides. This is hydroxide. So I need to make sure I have two of these guys. This two just tells me I have two hydrogens. So I'm going to rewrite this, making it Ca, I'm going to put in parentheses just like math, CaOH2. So that two now tells me it's going the whole thing, the whole polyatomic ion. So that's um, how I'm going to write that. Make sure you use the parentheses. So let's practice this real quick. Um, this guy, we're going to just do our name, magnesium. And here, again, oh no, there's more than one atom. We know if you have to go to our polyatomic ion list, nitrate. This guy, now this is where you get tricky. This guy is three, but you can't just write copper sulfate because copper, don't forget, is a transition metal. So you have to make sure we have to indicate what charge it is. So sulfur, sulfate is a minus two. So in this case, there's one, one sulfate, and that means and there's one copper. So this must be a plus two to make it equal. So it's copper two sulfate. There's a lot of stuff to remember for uh, naming ionic bonds, but hopefully this helps you out. And by two, I can't do this with you two laughing back there. Work it, work it. So if we had, no, that's not right. Three coplanar points. So have you ever gotten off an airplane? <laughs> That should be Listen. Yeah. Dang. Is it like 500 degrees in here or what? All right, so when you're in chemistry class, you're going to be doing a lot of work. You're going to be bleh, starting over. So as an example, we could consider like you've got a chain hanging from two um, two fix. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>